plant-based probiotic coconut drink. Is this good for me? Oh. Creek yogurt. Billions of probiotics. <laughs> Are you confused about what you need to do to keep your gut healthy? Don't worry, I got you covered. I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition, providing you with unbiased, relevant health and nutrition information, empowering you to make educated, informed decisions. Um, not surprisingly, I got lots of questions after my last video about probiotics for a healthy gut, um, but I was talking mostly about um, dietary supplements. And, but in talking about foods, some people would prefer to eat foods versus take a supplement. Some of the very first processed foods were fermented foods. And we've been fermenting foods for thousands of years as a way to process and preserve foods and helps keep foods safe to eat. Um, fermented foods are made from, through a variety of live microbial cultures um, and they're potentially beneficial microbes, but not all fermented foods are what we call probiotics. One way to look at fermentation is we take one ingredient and transform it into another. For example, yogurt is made from milk. Kimchi and sauerkraut are made from cabbage. Miso and tempeh are made from soybeans and kombucha is made from tea. So those are all examples of fermented products that you might've heard about. To remind you about probiotics, there's no federal definition of, of probiotics here in the US, although there is a widely accepted worldwide scientific definition, and they are live microorganisms, which usually a bacteria or yeast, that when administered in an adequate amount, confer a health benefit to the host, the host being you or me. So it's the right organism at um, in the right amount giving a particular health benefit. Although all fermented foods require an action of live microorganisms, fermented foods in their final form may or may not contain those live microorganisms that we need for something to be a probiotic. Okay, whether it's a food, a beverage, a supplement, um, the be its benefits must be supported by research. I'm going to be showing you several examples so you can kind of get an idea of what to look for on a nutrition label. Um, and I first want to show you, though, a resource. Now, it doesn't have all potential um, probiotic options, but it highlights those that have um, research behind them. Let's check it out. This is the Clinical Guide to Probiotic Products available here in the U.S. And you can get this at um, usprobioticguide.com. But I'm gonna give you an example of what you can see here. And specifically, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna look at functional foods. It has all sorts of supplements in here as well. But um, you can see some of the foods like Activia, Dan Active, various Good Belly, for example. But I'm gonna scroll down here um, to Yakult. This is what I'm gonna show you in particular. Um, its particular uh, bacteria is um, Lactobacillus casei Sharoda. okay? And you can see what it's indicated for. And then if you click on the little green button there, you'll see all the various research that's associated with the benefits of this particular strain of bacteria. So let's go ahead and check out Yakult. So here I'm on the Yakult website and I see um, the product here. And um, what we wanna be looking for when we're looking at a label, we wanna make sure that we see a few things. We wanna make sure that we see live and active cultures, and you'll see that right up at the top there of the, um, of the package. And then we also wanna look in the ingredients and see which particular bacteria strain is associated with this, has the benefit. And here you can see Lactobacillus casei Sharoda. Okay, so this is an excellent example. But I wanted to show you um, specifically how to look for the bacteria. We want to look for what we call um, the genus, which is the big name. And then we have the species, that's the KCI, and Sharoda is the specific strain. And different strains have different effects on um, an individual um, in regard to their gut health and some other um, aspects of their health. I want to spend a moment talking about two products, yogurt and kombucha. Yogurt is... Uh, an excellent product, especially the plain yogurt without the added sugar. Many people are familiar with um, this fermented food, um, and generally you're gonna see live and active cultures. But just because it does have those live and active cultures does not make it a probiotic. So um, nevertheless, yogurt, especially plain without added sugars, is a great source of nutrition and should be um, a part of your, your overall um, diet. Kombucha. 
To keep this video length in check, I'm gonna be reviewing um, and talking about kombucha in a separate video. So make sure that you're subscribed to Neely on Nutrition so you can get notified of um, any upcoming videos. But in a word though, the sales and the marketing of many of these products far exceed the research. All right, let's dive into uh, and go online and check out some um, products and I can show you what to look for, um, what better for you examples are and not so better examples for you are. Okay, let's go. I wanted to show you what a good good example of a label will look like. And um, I've got the Siggy's um, plant-based probiotic coconut drink, which by the way, was quite good. I'm gonna scroll down here and show you the information that I have or that we see on the label. We see the live active cultures, but also notice we see the live active cultures and specifically we see the probiotic cultures. So we have um, three different live active cultures here um, and the probiotic culture, the bifidobacterium lactis HN019. Now, the reason that this is separated now, I'm speculating this actually, but, um, but remember the definition of a probiotic. It is a living microorganism that when given in an adequate amount provides a health benefit. So this particular strain of bacteria has shown to have a health benefit. These other ones, I don't know off the top of my head if they do or not. I think the acidophilus, that one definitely is, but probably not in the quantity of colony forming units to have that benefit. Remember in that adequate amount. That's, I'm just speculating there, but that's what I would um, guess. So good job, Siggy's. I haven't looked at every single one of their products, but uh, I did check several of them and they have this broken down like this. So kudos to them. And by the way, I have no affiliation with any of the products that I'm talking about in this video. So although I did meet Siggy at one event many, many years ago, <laughs> nice guy. I wanna give you an example of where marketing is running pretty free and loose giving um, products a health halo, so to speak. The term probiotics is very loosely used, so I wanted to share some information with you. Remember that not all fermented foods are probiotics, but they're given this health halo, like kimchi and sauerkraut, both fermented foods um, from cabbage. And we can see right here on the label, it says just because a probiotic label is there does not necessarily mean it is a probiotic. What is the bacteria that's being used? Does it have a health benefit? So we've got to flip the package over and look at the ingredient list. And in these examples here, I see no indication that there are any beneficial bacteria. So I'd scratch these off the list. Now, there might be other kimchi or sauerkraut that might have a health benefit, but again, what we need to do is Look at the package. Look at the ingredients. The good news about these products though, they are vegetables. So it's if you like these products, it, it is a way to get vegetables in. Although they do have sodium, so we do have, if you need to watch your sodium intake, um, be cautious with that. That was a snapshot of some products and I hope it gave you some insight in what to look for and, and be aware of. And as a reminder, I will be following up with a video specifically about kombucha. If you like this information, um, share it, give me a thumbs up please and comment and um, ask any questions. And remember, there is no one food that's going to be a cure for everything in life. Our gut is an ever evolving ecosystem and the cool thing about it is it can change. Um, many things impact it, including um, your overall um, eating habits, stress, lifestyle, um, use of antibiotics, um, physical activity, all of those play into it. Um, in addition to those fermented foods that I showed you, we're also seeing other packaged foods like cereal and nutrition bars. And be cautious of some of those foods too because um, to me, they look like ultra processed foods. And if you do have a GI issue though, or think you do, talk to your physician um, or your gastroenterologist and um, because nothing in a package or pill or product is going to replace proven treatments. Many products I discussed um, in this video are very nutritious and certainly fit into a plant-focused diet, but don't be swept up into the health halo of, of some of these probiotic type foods or what look to be that. Focus on your overall diet, get plenty of rest, um, get moving, and uh, work on ways to reduce stress. Yeah, do that. Thanks for watching Neely Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.